Okay, welcome back everybody. We are on topic for software as part of the IGCSE Cambridge Computer Science qualification. Um, this is video three and we're going to be talking about interrupts and we're going to be looking at running applications on our computers. As you can see here, we're still in the types of software and interrupts and we need to understand these things mentioned here. Then we'll move on to IDEs and programming environments. So running applications, when we turn our computers on, when we first start it up, a part of the operating system is loaded into RAM memory. This is known as booting, or booting up the computer. The startup of the computer's motherboard is handled by the basic input output system, the BIOS. There's a little BIOS chip there sat on the motherboard. And the BIOS tells the computer where the operating system can be found on the hard drive. It then loads the part of the operating system that is needed and executes it. The BIOS is often referred to as firmware. Firmware is defined as a program that provides low-level control for devices. It is permanent software programmed into a read-only memory, a chip such as this one. So what is firmware? Well, firmware, you've, you've, you'll have seen this before probably on your mobile phones. It's a thing that um, updating software to make something run better i.e. in this case the camera, the camera on our mobile phones. So firmware is software that's embedded into a piece of hardware. You can think of it as um, simple software for hardware. However, software is different from firmware, so the two are not interchangeable terms. Devices that you might think of as strictly hardware, such as an optical drive, network card, TV remote, router, media player, a camera or a scanner, all of software that's programmed into a special memory contained in the hardware itself. And this is what's known as firmware. Moving on to interrupts. Interrupts we need to cover in this part of the um, topic. An interrupt, there we go, we're stopping, look. Exactly the same as the dictionary definition, an interrupt is a signal from a device attached to a computer or from a program within the computer that requires the operating system to stop and figure out what to do next. Interrupts can be caused by an input-output process, i.e. .e., a, a disk drive or a printer requiring more data, a hardware fault, for example, there's a paper jam or the, pa the printer's run out of paper, um, user interaction, user interaction, for example, um, on a PC, on a Windows machine, we generally press Control alt del if something has gone wrong, if there's been a break and uh, something needs to be reset. And finally, software errors that can cause problems, for example, an .exe file, an executable file, that cannot be found to initiate the execution of a program. Two processes trying to access the same memory location or an attempt to divide by zero. All of these are problems that require an interrupt. So here we go, we're multitasking on our PC. Interrupts allow computers to carry out many tasks or to have several programs open at the same time. An example will be downloading a file from the internet um, and at the same time listening to music maybe in, in iTunes. Interrupts allow these two functions to coexist and the user has the impression that both functions have been carried out simultaneously. But in reality, data is passed in and out of memory very, very rapidly allowing both functions to be serviced. This can all be achieved um, by using an area of memory known as a buffer, and I'm sure you've heard of buffering before. And here we go, here's a, a great example of buffering when we're trying to watch a movie, trying to watch Netflix maybe on an iPad. A buffer is a memory area that stores data temporarily. For example, buffers are used when downloading a movie from the internet to compensate for the differences between download speeds and the data requirements of the receiving device. The data transmission rate of the movie file from the internet to then buffer must be greater than the rate at which the data is transferred from the buffer to the media player. Without buffers, the movie would frequently freeze, frequently pause, usually with a screen like this. So let's talk about interrupts and buffers. Um, I've got a picture diagram here. Um, we're going to use interrupts and buffers when printing a document. So here I am. So here I am. And is there any data to be sent to the printer? No. Okay, well, the computer will just carry on as it normally does. Okay, but yes, we have got a document that needs to be sent to our little printer here. 
data from the document to be printed is sent to the printer buffer from the computer memory. The contents of the printer buffer are emptied to the printer and the data from the document is printed. All the data is sent to the printer. Okay, no. Meanwhile, the processor is able to carry out other tasks while the printer buffer is being emptied and it repeats this section here. Or, all the data has been sent to the printer, yes it has. When all the data has been printed, the printer buffer becomes empty. An interrupt signal is then sent back to the processor. The interrupt signal is sent to request more data to be sent to the printer. The current task is suspended while the interrupt is serviced. So it's asking, is there any more data to be sent to the printer? Let's check in. Is there any more data to be sent to the printer? No. Okay, we'll carry on. We're looping around. Well, that is it, everybody. That is the final video for um, software. Um, in terms of part one, we will then move on to IDEs and programming interfaces. If you haven't subscribed already, please, please do so. Please hit notifications, and I will let you know about the next video. Thank you very much indeed. Bye for now.